positive thinking is better than negative thinking <laughs> if you ask me so if you got nothing if somebody told you to think positively that's still fine i think but there is a big leap between positive thinking and faith thinking just because you sit here and say i will have 10 million dollars by next year <laughs> that's not going to happen you know what is god's will for your life where are you headed what are you supposed to do what are you going to do what is your call in life are you, are you living for god or you seeking to do what god wants you to do mm-hmm. if you go in that direction and you believe that this is what god wants me to do this is what god has promised this is where i'm going this is what i'm doing then you begin to speak it because yet some people think that i only preach prosperity and some people have tagged me as prosperity preacher i is a prosperity preacher. yeah i have preached on prosperity i have preached on prosperity for 20 by 30 weeks 40 weeks what is church there for it is to address these problems we need to address these problems we need to help people get over these problems so these are uh, some of the uh, very precious moments generally we don't get yeah to ask a question to great men and generals of faith yeah uh, very rare moments i believe it will be very edifying so please settle down and listen to what they have to speak over from 40 over years of ministry experience yeah so modala kelvi pastor நீங்க போதிக்கும் சத்தியம் மிகவும் அதிகமாக இருக்கிறது மக்களுக்கு தேவையான சத்தியம் இருப்பினும் சில ஜனங்கள் அதை ஏற்றுக்கொள்ள தயங்குவது ஏன் ஏன் சில நேரங்களில் முக்கியமான புரட்சிகள் எதிர்க்கப்படுகிறது ஏற்கனவே இதுதான் கரெக்டுன்னு சொல்லி சில காரியங்கள போதிச்சு சில நேரத்தில் சிறு வயதிலிருந்து அதை உள்ளே ஏற்றிருக்காங்க நாங்கள் ரொம்ப ஸ்ட்ராங் பெண்டிங் ஹாஸ்டல் பேக்ரவுண்ட்லேருந்து வந்தோம் எங்கள் வீட்டில் சொல்லிட்டாங்க எங்கள் பாட்டி சொல்லுவாங்க எங்கள் பாட்டி கண்ணாடியில் கூட முகம் பார்க்க மாட்டாங்க ஏன்னா கண்ணாடியெல்லாம் உடைப்பேன் பைபிளில் இருக்குது அந்த வசனத்தெல்லாம் எடுத்து வச்சுட்டு கண்ணாடியில் கூட முகம் கா பார்க்குறது வந்து உலக பிரகாரமான இதுன்னு நினைக்கிறவங்க தலையில் சீப்பு போட்டு சீவ மாட்டாங்க சும்மா அப்படி உலர்த்திட்டு இப்படி தூக்கி போட்டு ஒரு குடிமை போடுவாங்க அவ்வளோதான் அந்த அளவுக்கு ஸ்ட்ரிக்டாக இருந்த ஆட்கள் மருந்தே சாப்பிட மாட்டாங்க பாட்டியம்மா சின்ன வயசில் கண்ணாடி போட்டிருந்தவங்க கண்ணாடியை கழட்டி போட்டு எண்பத்தி மூணு வயசு வரைக்கும் உயிரோடு இருந்தாங்க கரெக்ட் நல்லா பைபிள் வாசிப்பாங்க எந்த பிரச்சனையும் இல்லை அவங்களுக்கு அவங்க ஏமி கார் மைக்கிளுடைய ஆர்ஃபனேஜெல்லாம் வளர்ந்தவங்க கிறிஸ்துவை ஏற்றுக்கொண்டதன் மூலமாக கிறிஸ்துவ அறியாத குடும்பத்திலேருந்து வந்து பன்னெண்டு வயசில் ஏமி கார் மைக்கள் மூலமாக சுவிசேஷத்தை கேள்விப்பட்டு சிறு பிள்ளைகள் கூட்டத்தில் ஏற்றுக்கொண்டதன் மூலமாக வீட்டை விட்டு வெளியேறி அவங்கள்ட்ட போய் தஞ்சை மடைஞ்சு அங்கே வளர்ந்தவங்க ஆனால் பிற்காலத்தில் போய் பெண்டிகாஸில் உள்ள ரொம்ப ஆழமாக போயிட்டாங்க இதில் முதல்ல இந்த பெண்டிகாஸில் இதில் இல்லை அப்புறம் இதில் போன பிறகு ரொம்ப இந்த லீகலிஸ்டிக் ஐடியாஸ் நிறையா வந்துடுச்சு அவங்களுக்குள்ள நகை போடக்கூடாது ஒரு பவுடர் கூட போடக்கூடாது ஒரு ஆஃப்டர் ஷேவ் கூட போடக்கூடாது அந்த மாதிரி ஒரு ஒரு இதை நம்பினாங்க அவங்க நகையெல்லாம் போடக்கூடாது அதாவது ஒரு மோதிரம் போட்டிங்கன்னா நேராக நிறையத்துக்கு போயிடுவீங்கன்றுவாங்க கிளீனாக நான் அமெரிக்கா போயிருந்தப்ப முதல் முறையாக ஒரு வீட்டில் போய் நான் பிரசங்கம் பண்ணேன் முதல் பிரசங்கம் தான் எதிர்பாராத விதத்தில் என்னை பிரசங்கம் பண்ண சொன்னாங்க ரோமர் ஒன்று பதினாறுலேருந்து பிரசங்கம் பண்ணேன் அந்தம்மா ஒரு நகை கடை ஓனர் அந்த அம்மா என்ன பண்ணிட்டாங்க வர அதுக்கு அடுத்து வந்த கிறிஸ்மஸ்க்கு எனக்கு நல்ல ஒரு மோதிரம் ஒன்று பரிசாக கொடுத்தாங்க அந்தம்மா அதை நான் போடுவேன் கழட்டி போடுவேன் க பயமாக இருக்கும் எனக்கு ஏன்னா நரகம் போயிடுவேன்னு சொல்லி வளர்த்தாங்க அதனால் எனக்கு அதை ஜீரணிக்கவே முடியல அப்புறம் நான் பிறகு ஒரு அதை விட ப படித்து ஒரு நாலு வருஷம் படிச்சுட்டு அப்புறம் நியூயார்க் சிட்டியில் போய் ஒரு யூனிவர்சிட்டியில் படித்தேன் அங்கே படிச்சுட்டு இருக்கப்போ வெளியில் ரூம் எடுத்திருந்தோம் பாருங்கள் அது ஒரு அன்சேஃப் ஏரியா ரூம் எடுத்திருந்தப்ப கழட்டி வச்சுருவேன் சில நேரம் ஒரு மாதிரி எனக்கு பயமாக இருக்கிறப்ப குற்ற உணர்வு வர்றப்ப கழட்டி வச்சுருவேன் டேபிளில் ஒரு நாள் அப்படி வச்சுட்டு மறந்துட்டு போயிட்டேன் அன்றைக்கி தான் ஒரு புது டிவி வேறு வாங்கி வச்சேன் அதை கொண்டு வரத யாரும் பார்த்துட்டான் ரோடில் அன்றைக்கி வந்து என் ரூமை திறந்து டிவி வாட்ச்சு என்னுடைய மோதிரம் எல்லாத்தையும் தூக்கிட்டு போயிட்டான் என்னென்னா இது போடுறதுக்கு வந்து எவ்வளோ நாள் ஆச்சுன்னா ஒரு ஏழு எட்டு வருஷம் ஆச்சு எனக்கு இந்த மோதிரத்தை யார் என்ன சொன்னாலும் நான் போட்டுக்க போகிறேன் அப்படின்ற தைரியம் வர்றதுக்கு அவ்வளோ நாள் ஆச்சு அப்போ ஏற்றுக்கொள்ள முடியாதுன்னு இல்லை இந்த பாரம்பரியங்கள் வந்து நம்மளை வந்து அடிமைப்படுத்திடுது சில நேரத்தில் ரொம்ப கஷ்டமாகிடுது அதுலேருந்து அது ஒரு விதத்தில் நல்லது தான் டிலே பண்ணது ஏன்னா ஒரு ஃப்ளிப்பண்ட்டாக 
யாரோ சொன்னாங்க டக்குன்னு போட்டிக்கிட்டேன்னா அப்போ நான் அறிவு இல்லாதவனாக ஆகிடுவேன் நான் நல்லா யோசிக்கணும் தீர்மானிக்கிறோம் இது கரெக்டான ஆராயணும் நான் அதெல்லாம் பண்ணேன் கரெக்டான ஆராய்ச்சி உறுதிப்படுத்திக்கிட்டு இதில் இறங்கலாமா போடலாமா இது ஓகேயா அப்படின்னு நல்லா தெரிஞ்சுட்டு தான் போட்டேன் ஒழிய சும்மா டக்குன்னு யாரோ சொன்னாங்கன்னு ஒன்று போட்டுருங்க எதுவுமே அப்படி தான் ஃபெய்த் டீச்சிங் கூட அப்படி தான் அது கேட்டப்ப டோட்டல் வித்தியாசமாக இருந்தது வித்தியாசம்னா அவ்வளோ வித்தியாசமாக இருந்தது நான் உடனே ஏற்றுக்கல அதை ரொம்ப நாள் வச்சு அப்படியே பார்த்து 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 அது எனக்கு ரொம்ப ப்ராக்டிக்கலாக தெரிஞ்சது ரொம்ப கிளியராக பைபிள்லேருந்து அது விளங்குச்சு எனக்கு அப்புறம் தான் நான் அதை ஏற்றுக்கொண்டேன் அதனால தான் ரொம்ப கிளியராக பிரசங்கம் பண்ண முடியுது என்னால் அந்த ஃபெய்த்தை கிளியராக பிரசங்கம் பண்ண முடியுது அது அதனால் கொஞ்சம் டிலே ஆகி ஏற்றுக்கொள்கிறதுல ஒன்றும் தப்பு கிடையாது நான் அப்படிப்பட்ட ஜனங்களை நான் வந்து கடிந்து கொள்வது இல்லை திட்டுறது இல்லை ஒன்றும் பண்ணுறது இல்லை அவங்க டைம் எடுத்துக்கிட்டோம் நான் என்ன சொல்கிறேன் நீங்கள் பைபிள் எடுத்துகிட்டு வாங்க பாருங்கள் உங்களுக்கு விளங்கள்னா ஏற்றுக்கொள்ளாதீங்க உங்களுக்கு ஏற்றுக்கொள்ள முடியலன்னா ஏற்றுக்கொள்ளாதீங்க ஆனால் இது உண்மையான சோதித்து பாருங்கள் நீங்கள் டைம் எடுத்துங்க சோதித்து பாருங்கள் உண்மையாக இருந்தால் ஏற்றுக்கொள்ளுங்க வேணாம்னா விட்டுருங்க அப்படின்னு தான் நான் எப்போவுமே சொல்கிறேன் சேர்த்துக்கிறேன் Uh, okay. pastor you said that we can't twist god's hand by fasting uh-huh. uh, but uh, on the other hand when we read the old testament uh-huh. uh, there are some instances uh, they have quoted hezekiah when he was given a death sentence but uh, 15 years he could yeah. pray fast and uh, you know uh, it was turned back and also the people of nineveh uh, when they were uh, you know they were uh, already doomed for destruction but uh, god changed his heart so I, how do we re- i don't see it like that i see it as god already determined that he will save nineveh and he will give them another chance <laughs> so jonah didn't get there according to god's command he didn't go there so god kind of worked it out in so many ways to get him there when he get when he got him there and when he preached people uh, were saved and the people repented and so on Uh, but 100 years later it was again destroyed this anyway was destroyed yes. because they were hard hearted and they went back to their old ways and uh, they did not uh, truly uh, permanently turn back you know in hezekiah's case also i believe that god had already made up his mind to grant him life you know god is not trying to kill him you know <laughs> god is not intending to kill him but he had to come to his senses and he had to get right, right. and uh, his fasting may have helped him to get right mm. instead of getting god right god was not making a mistake so that he was making a correction kadavula edho thappu pantaaru konnu vendaaru seri na ipdi romba ganjiradhanaala kolla maata apdi aaga mudiyadhu ena avar kadavula or mistake ah pandradilla edhu pandradilla agave ivan than thirunda vendiyadhu irundhadhu ivan thirundhadhanaala kathar avanukku andha varshangala kooti kuduthaar but the fasting and praying is was uh, to make him repent um, to, to cause a change in change him kathar maradavar endradhu it's a it's a established, established law. law so god cannot change yes. the next question is like uh, uh, dear pastor faith teaching versus positive mindset how to differentiate uh, heathens also developed this kind of a belief system and started to speak and uh, they are talking about speaking to be well part two uh, this person also asking when i don't see things happening after believing in my heart and speaking out the word what should i do uh, what is the maximum threshold adukku evlo naal adha mari kaathirukalam number one is in the positive mindset versus okay. faith a, teaching that's a very good question positive very. mindset versus faith mindset that i had the question also a long time ago i had the same question in my mind what is the difference between positive thinking i've read all the books by Norman Vincent Peale, uh, people like Robert Schuller and mm-hmm. so on, uh, they are into positive thinking, all right? And I've also read some worldly books. All the positive thinking speakers or motivational speakers, most of them, not all, but most of them are theologically trained people that know the Bible also, that were one-time preachers. For example, Orison Sweat Modern mm-hmm. is a very famous uh, writer whose books have been sold by the hundreds of thousands of copies from from early 1900s he had a magazine called success which went 50000 copies every month in 1900 year 1900 so on so famous he was amazing writer in positive thinking i've read many of these things and i like their stories motivational story i like them i have no object positive thinking is better than 
negative thinking <laughs> if you ask me so if you got nothing if somebody told you to think positively that's still fine i think but there is a big leap Difference. between positive thinking and faith thinking hmm. or faith believing you know positive thinking tells you that you can, you can do your best that you can be your best eh? whatever you are whatever intelligence you have completely it can be tapped and 100% of it potential your potential can be realized you can be your best if you only believe in yourself that's what they are saying faith thinking says not that i can do my best i can do the impossible because god is the one that is in me who gives me the will and the do <laughs> he gives me the desire to do things and the thought to do things and he makes that possible so that i go beyond the threshold of my potentiality mm. i cross my potential i begin to do things that are totally impossible for me Amen. because faith thinking puts god on the top you know yes. it's not my thinking it is god giving me what to think mm. you see that is the difference uh, we think god's thoughts uh, we think god's will Uh, and so on and the second question is uh, when i don't see things happening in faith when i yeah. don't see things happening when i believe in my heart uh, and also confessing with my mouth what should i do yeah a lot of people think uh, take this believing in the heart and confessing with the mouth like a formula you know that if you believe something in your heart and confess with your mouth it will happen the bible faith teaching does not say that faith teaching says if you believe god's word <laughs> if you believe the thing that is god's will for your life and you speak it see it must be god's will for you and it must be god's word and god's promise for you then you speak it then only it will happen not it won't happen just because you speak it you know just because you sit here and say i will have 10 million dollars by next year <laughs> you know that's not going to happen you know what is god's will for your life where are you headed what are you supposed to do what are you going to do what is your call in life and you are you living for god or are you seeking to do what god wants you to do mm-hmm. if you go in that direction and you believe that this is what god wants me to do this is what god has promised this is where i'm going this is what i'm doing then you begin to speak it because now you are exercising faith in what you believe to god be god's word what you believe to be god's will for your life if it is not god's will you can confess it all you want it's not going to do anything if it's god's will if you don't confess it it's not going to happen because if you don't confess it that means you don't even believe it in your heart confession is evidence that you believe it in your heart the tank is full so the tap is pouring water right so believe what god wants for your life believe in the will of god can be convinced that it's god's will for you and confess it then then only it will happen you know that is, that is uh, faith and patience patience in her yeah faith faith and patience david was anointed but it took him yeah only when he was 30 years yeah he became king that yes. is, that, that is another Same thing, important Joseph. aspect you know even if it's the will of god the timing of god timing of god. Uh, is very important what she's banju uh, is saying is the timing you know just because you confess it's not like you just confess 10 times and tomorrow you'll have it you know it's not like that god has a timing for everything he knows better than us uh, so we must be submitted to that and in his timing it will happen sometimes it can take years also see in the case of abraham 75 years old he was when god promised him a son he was 100 years old when he got a son <laughs> why there's a lot of reasons for it i can go into it but there's a lot of reasons he god wanted him to reach a point where everybody should say that it's impossible then he wanted to give it to him because he wanted to use him as an example of faith hmm. how faith can achieve the impossible so he wanted to wait until he was 100 if he was 75 and he had a child a lot of people would have said well he's an old man slightly older and so he got a child so what when it's 100 <laughs> then it's a, it's a different thing and wife is 90 then it's a, everybody says it's impossible it still happened and so on right so pastor since you touched on the will 
there is a question on that so then how do we know it's perfectly the will for me the primary source of knowing the will of god is the word of god eh? and then the holy spirit also uh, now when it comes to the holy spirit sometimes some people may prophesy to you uh, so now, now sometimes people go searching for prophecies you know which i don't agree you know that you should go looking for people to prophesy over you mm. to tell you the will of god that is i think that has gone to another extreme mm. <laughs> you know i remember when i was about 13 years old a man from kerala came to our house my father had invited him to preach in our convention and he preached on the day he was leaving after the meeting was over he before going to the railway station he prayed <laughs> we were all standing around in the house and he prayed and when he prayed he began to prophesy about me uh, his name was manganam joseph <laughs> began to prophesy over me now i think back everything he said i'm doing today amen when i was 13 years old i never thought i'll go anywhere outside of india my father himself had never been there in my family nobody ever went anywhere at that time so we had not no dreams of going anywhere doing anything and i had no inclination to do ministry or anything like that but he told me that i will be preaching to thousands upon thousands of people i'll be going all over the world he told me everything that i'm doing you know uh, today which is unbelievable at that time i did not take it as anything big but when it happened then i looked back and i said oh my god you know that guy already prophesied all these things and it happened so i believe that there is truly a prophetic ministry and it uh, it can be that somebody prophesies and it will happen to you you know and uh, but the thing is to seek the will of god mainly through prophecies is not a good thing good. i think in the new testament times uh, sure. everybody has the holy spirit <laughs> inside of you and it's a totally different story in the old testament times david when he wanted to go to war he sent a word to the prophet said can i go or not tell me so when the prophet told him only he went because god did not speak to everybody he spoke only to certain anointed people but today the case is that god speaks to each and every one of us and he guides us through the inward witness that's another thing you see inward witness not through audible god can speak anyway he can speak through audible voice also but normally he does not do <laughs> i think if he spoke through audible voice this building will come down you know <laughs> <laughs> so god doesn't speak through audible voice so that everybody can hear normally yes. normally i'm talking about normally i don't mean to say that god never speaks through audible voice mm. i'm saying normally god speaks through inward witness yes. that needs some training and practice to listen to the inward witness you begin to sense it and uh, you become more and more uh, sensitive to it and you are able to discern it more correctly uh, as you go along it's it's like a, it's like walking with god and learning how to listen to him and and to know his will and so on but the yes. word of god is very important yes. word of god lays out general principles concerning the will of god mm-hmm. and if anybody prophesies and if it doesn't go along with the word of god Forget you it. know you should not take it as anything and you should not go search for a prophecy uh, if anybody prophesies over you also it must be only taken as a confirmation to what god has already spoken inside of you mm. if god has already spoken inside of you this person prophesying over you may give you something as a confirmation but at the same time you should not say God has spoken something to me so I'm going to go to the prophet and seek confirmation. Mm. You should not seek out a prophet like that, you know. Uh but if it so happens a confirmation comes through a other prophet that's fine, you know. Mm. Uh of something that God has already spoken to you. Yes. That's my stand on on prophecy. You know? Thank you pastor. Right. So uh this person is asking so இதை வந்து நம்ம இந்த மெட் பொருளாதார செழிப்பை கொடுத்தே பேசி கொண்டு வந்தோம் இஃப் யூ ஆர் கான்ஸ்டன்ட்லி ஸ்பீக்கிங் அபவுட் மெட்டீரியல் பிளெஸிங் மோர் வில் இட் ஹிண்டர் பீப்புள் ஃப்ரம் கோயிங் அவுட் டு ஃபார் த காஸ்பல் ஆன் த அன்ரீச்டு பிளேசஸ் சின்ஸ் கோயிங் அவுட் டு 
the needy people and you know uh, the missions and so on and so forth they have to live with lot of sacrificial life they have to live a simple life and so on and so forth so appa idu mari spolla da selipai kudite pesi kondu vandomenal adu neriye per indha mari missions la il unreached places ku poradile thadai varuma yeah that's a nice question. nice question i have a series on hebrews chapter 11 yeah. and particularly the verses from verse 34 and so on hebrews chapter 11 the last few verses yeah. which talk, <coughs> talk about people who were killed who suffered and died and so on for the sake of their faith and so i have explained it thoroughly there i invite you to go to our playlist in revsam.org uh, in our website or you go to your youtube channel aft church channel go to the playlist and living by faith is the name of the series and that's a hebrews 11 series i preach verse by verse on hebrews 11 those i preached like 15 messages or so on just those few verses fully explaining this whole thing about suffering and so on all right just because we preach about material prosperity it does not mean that we believe that we should not sacrifice anything we should live a life of luxury and never have any sacrifice about us you know i don't believe in that i myself have sacrificed a lot of things you know <laughs> we used to go on and into small villages and do ministry and so on like i said i will sit in the street and eat because that's that's the only hotel you get and uh, i've slept in cow sheds basically in villages and uh, whatever you have to do you have to do to preach the gospel Amen. you know uh, and there's no problem for me even today but the thing is i don't come to singapore and search for a cow shed <laughs> you know Uh, that's uh, trying to be one extreme you know that i because i believe that i should live only in a cow shed or something like that i don't go to places like singapore or anywhere even chennai and look for the lowest kind of place to live because i'm trying to save some money for god because i think god has no money problem you know god is able to meet all our needs all you need to think fairly honestly you know you should not uh, you should not think of god as a miserly person who does not want his children to have anything that kind of attitude is what we detest and we do not like god is a generous god god blesses us particularly material blessings are promised in the bible if you're not going to talk about it then what are you going to do about all the things that it says about material blessings eh? material blessings are to be part of life because we are partly a material being mm. we are not just a spiritual being and that's why i said if you're going to marry a person all aspects of life is important a person must be spiritual but also a person must be able to produce some money by working otherwise uh, you cannot say well all i want is a husband who can pray and fast mm. and live for god but what are you going to do about food you know uh, <laughs> how are you going to pay your rent you need a husband who can earn also uh, who has some sense to do the right thing for his family and so on you see because you, your life is material also so why do we dismiss the material part of life mm. and embrace only the spiritual mm. we need to embrace the whole oh. see when you talk about spirit soul and body material and spiritual and all that is only for teaching we must separate it mm. so that we can understand it but you cannot actually separate it you cannot separate me into two beings spiritual being and material being i am one being <laughs> i am both spiritual and material yes i may be very spiritual and i may be speaking in tongues 10 hour, 10 hours a day and <laughs> and praising god and all that but then i am hungry also, hungry also. <laughs> i got to go eat <laughs> yes and there are certain foods i like and i'd love to have that food if it's possible you know because i'm a material being So there's nothing wrong talking about material. In fact, if you don't talk about material things, you're going to miss something very important. You you're going to have people that are totally dissatisfied with life, living in failure because of their wrong thinking about material aspect of life. They're living in poverty because they think God wants poverty. They glorified poverty and they live like that and they never hear the truth. You see, that I see a lot. See, I don't preach on prosperity all the time. 
you go and examine my history of last 40 years of preaching in india and i started preaching 50 years ago actually but 40 years i've been preaching in india eh? with next year it will be 40 years of indian church pastor ministry eh? i've preached so long and you go and everything that i've preached almost everything in the first two three, two, three years we didn't record but after that we have recorded more than 35 years we have recordings at least of audio and last 20 years or so we have had recording of video also mm. you go and see what all the what is the series i've preached on and you see how much i've preached on prosperity you know it will be only a small percentage but i have preached on it from time to time but i preached on every subject for example 1992 i started preaching on romans for 8 years every sunday morning verse by verse i preached on romans yet some people think that i only preach prosperity and some people have tagged me as prosperity preacher i is a prosperity preacher yeah i have preached on prosperity i have preached on prosperity for 25 30 weeks 40 weeks at one time all right but i have preached for 365 weeks on romans romans continuously every sunday morning and i have preached on ephesians for 8 years also six chapters took six and a half years to complete on bible study days on tuesday nights in my church people come whether i'm preaching prosperity or romans or if number of people come you know we are not lopsided we are not uh, preaching just one thing and leaving out the other thing we preach the entire bible Yes. Like for example, if you attended our church now, in the month of February 2024, or if you attended any time since 2023, January, you've been, if you've been attending our church, Sundays and Tuesdays and Fridays, three days we have church. Sundays, four services, Tuesday, two Bible studies, Friday, two prayer meetings. If you attended our church, I'll tell you what you will get. On Sundays, you will get the Gospel of Mark. gospel according to mark passage by passage covering from the first chapter first verse all the way to the end mm. that's what you'll get on sundays all four services gospel of mark tuesday if you come you'll get romans 30 years later i'm doing it again it's being video recorded now romans in english and tamil separately one hour each bible study every tuesday for the last one year first chapter took 37 weeks to get over i preached and if you come fridays we're going through the book of psalms and i'm teaching people how to pray using the psalms praying the bible it is called a series <laughs> so where am i pre- last two years i have not touched on prosperity <laughs> you know people <laughs> you know <laughs> but but i do do i believe in prosperity i yes. certainly do believe in prosperity. prosperity should you preach on prosperity yes. i certainly believe i should preach on do you know I preached some prosperity and some related subjects like success I preached on. And then I preached on one subject called how to be free from debt. You won't believe I preached it on Tuesday nights Bible study. At that time the church was small about 150 people used to attend Bible study. And when I started preaching on how to be free from debt the church started overflowing. Amen. We had to put hundreds of chairs outside the church because every other person there is in debt. Mm. that is a big problem they are coming to church with a big burden in their hearts they are always coming and say pastor please pray i am in debt i am sinking i feel suicidal i don't know what to do about my debt problem and we never speak about we are only talking about heaven you know <laughs> who is in third heaven who is in seventh heaven when is jesus coming when is jesus coming whether we are going to have tribulation or no tribulation we are going to fly away or the kingdom so. is going to come <laughs> and all this business and we never touch on how to be free from debt i yes, took yes. and preached for many weeks on how to be free from debt yeah. you know how many people <clears throat> became free from debt you come to our church if you call for testimony so many people will raise their hands yes. they came there one guy came and showed me credit cards he he lifted up his credit card wallet like this it, it was all the way down here wow. every card maxed out he is an mba he was earning quite well he was he was a manager of a bank at that time uh, completely in debt sinking and uh, is a management consultant and so on 
but completely in debt and sinking today is in church completely delivered from debt Praise completely God. free from debt so what is wrong in preaching about that that's a real problem people yes. have why do we preach about marriage because a lot of families are having marriage problems yes. how can you not preach about it that's why when i started preaching it to again tuesday night we got filled up so many people attended church you know some people one family was fighting on tuesday evening in their home they were about to hit each other and screaming on top of their voice and lady passing by that way she stopped and said you're christians why are you fighting like this go to this church where sam chandra is preaching on marriage, marriage. <laughs> and those people got up and came and sat in the crowd at the end of the meeting they came forward both of them with tears in their eyes marriage was in terrible mess there was a third person getting into that marriage and destroying that family they were about to separate go their own way that little children two little children they came there and they said you're talking just about our life we came one lady told us we will never be to this church one lady told us to come here and we came here this one whole hour of preaching for was for us and they started weeping <coughs> then i prayed with them and i said come on here today after 20 years they are still in church praise the lord completely the family is put together Amen. they bought a house i've dedicated it uh, 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 their children are grown up now and everything is going fine that family would have been destroyed otherwise hmm. what is church there for it is to address these problems we need to address these problems we need to help people Uh, get over these problems so it must prosperity if they don't preach you are depriving your people of a very important teaching from the bible yes. 